Hello, dear President, dear colleagues, listeners. Let me introduce a presentation about the early breast cancer and opportunities of reconstructive plasty. First of all, let me provide a bit of statistics on the topic. The number of aesthetic surgery, reconstructive plastic surgery statisticians at malignant breast cancer, there's more and more of those year after year. So the topic remains acute. If patients struggle for the better quality of life but have um, malignant disease of breast cancer. It may be a cataloma in situ, a budget cancer, invasive cancer, less than two centimeters in diameter without metastasis. Kinds of surgical intervention at breast cancer may be both organ preserving and organ removing. There may be plastic resection or radical mastectomy. Uh, hence, subcutaneous uh, or uh, skin uh, preserving or nipple reserving uh, surgery may be done with autologous uh, tissues. Uh, first of all, in the beginning of presentation, courageous surgeons shouldn't uh, uh, forget uh, to about all the principles of oncology. If uh, a patient has a small node a big breast and there's a chance to make an oncoplastic resection with sufficient material to work with. One shouldn't forget about the individual work with this patient and to research that patient better. Perhaps this patient uh, that is uh, okay for resection, but perhaps in fact uh, she should have a, a subcutaneous or a skin sparing mastectomy. A modern trends of um, surgery are based on the following wider introduction of organ preserving uh, operations, uh, observing oncology principles, using a skin sparing mastectomy with prosthetics, and if possible, uh, doing the biopsy of sentinel uh, lymph node. I, know, I think you know what this biopsy is um, about. Uh, here is a brief uh, video record of how we do it in our center. Here is the confirmation of a remote lymph node. When do we do complete uh, uh, removal of uh, the gland? If there are multiple microcalcinate, uh, multicentric, multifocal, uh, shape of growth of um, a tumor, or if there's BRCA-associated disease. Resection of breast may be radical when a fragment is removed together uh, with the uh, tumor node. And oncoplasty resection, again, removal of the fragment of tissue with um, regenerative lymphodectomy and part of the signal uh, sentinel node, but uh, then we use elements of plastic surgery. Here you can see kinds of oncoplastic resections with some clinical examples of surgeries. On this slide, uh, you see the left breast with the tumor nodule at the border of quadrants. 17, uh, 20 millimeters is the dimension. So she had oncoplasty using type T inverse and to the right, the centralizing um, surgery. You can see her before and after the surgery, three weeks after the surgery. That's oncoplasty resection of uh, breast using mastopexy round block type. Patient is uh, uh, presented. 
you can see the way she looks before surgery and with marking for radiotherapy after surgery as plasty. Then comes a note in the left bread, 18 by 12 millimeters. On this slide, you see the patient before and after the surgery. Mind you, in this case, submemory access was used in the folder. And the post-surgery scar is hidden in the fold. Lijo modification. If uh, the node is at the border of lower quadrants, Hove Findlay uh, modification. Oncoplasty, Grisotti type. If nipple has a lesion and the central sector, Z plasty. A mastectomy, maybe a classical, standard, a radical, or it may be a subcutaneous skin sparing um, with or without sparing of the nipple, and endoprosthetic, um, so either under or on top of the muscle. Uh, what endoprosthetic is installed um, subglandularly, polarized or textured? Uh, well, we can use different um, technique of installation of endoprosthesis. First, we should uh, determine what kind of a patient it should be. We um, decide on the constitution, the thickness of uh, um, fat layer, turgor of tissues, age, and the desire of patient to do the plastic. That's uh, the clinical example of a patient with a node under two centimeters upper quadrant big volume of um, breast tissue. At a first glance, seems like she can have an organ sparing surgery to have her node removed and then have um, um, a radiotherapy. But one should uh, pay closer attention to the surrounding tissues, um, whether they're good or not. Uh, there's plenty of calcinates. Uh, not sure if you see them well on the slide. Uh, plenty of diffused and locally um, located microcalcinates all over the breast tissues, uh, all over micro and macro calcinates. Uh, thus, we've sent the uh, patients to get all of the um, tissues removed. Same with um, mammal. If this patient um, has an um, endoprosthetic reconstruction, still uh, we do the assessment of mammal and we assess the thickness of um, fat layer. This patient has a good thickness of um, fat. That's her before and after surgery, subcutaneous mastectomy, reconstruction with biopsy of sentinel node. The section is in submammar fold. And similar example, a left breast. Uh, you can see a roundish node under 11 millimeters. Again, there's micro calcinates in rather a big area. We again determined the thickness of fat layer, and a decision was made that this patient should have subcutaneous removal of. Um, she also had budget um, cancer of left nipple. So skin sparing mastectomy with BFC of sentinel node, lymph node. Another example of a patient with subglandular installation of polyurethane implant. One more point. We're rather scrupulous about the kind of the skin section. You know, the previous patients, you can see we had submammary access. But in this case, this section was used due to the asymmetry of nipples. And uh, we've done the so-called PEXI uh, due to such a uh, section. Subcutaneous mastectomy on the right, polyurethane implant with uh, the sentinel lymph node biopsy. Next patient. 
a subcutaneous um, uh, removal of gland tissues under the muscle, or we will install the textured endoprosthetics. Uh, this section is again in the submammary folder. A special category of patients. Um, these are the ones um, with a genetically associated uh, cancer with um, um, gene uh, mutations of BRCA1 and 2. Uh, all of the gland is uh, removed uh, for them. And then uh, we also do the preventive mastectomy of the contralateral. Uh, for us, it's important that the genes are well expressed. Uh, example, patient age 34, BRCA associated um, cancer of right breast. She had aesthetic operation in the year 11. Uh, she had augmentation and she had f bad family history. Um, she has BRCA1, and that's her before and after the surgery. Next patient, 28, BRCA associated uh, cancer of left breast, stage 1, bad family history, gene mutation, two stage reconstruction. At the first stage, we did a subcutaneous mastectomy with biopsy of a sentinel lymph node, install, install the tissue expander. Then it was replaced with an implant, and there was a preventive subcutaneous uh, mastectomy of the other side with um, endoprosthetics. Uh, next slide has several patients um, with subglandular, not only polyurethane, but textured uh, endoprosthesis as well. Quite an interesting category of uh, patients. Uh, not every surgeon would dare to install a uh, textured endoprosthesis under the skin. There are certain risks of uh, extrusion. That's the patient before and after, in three months after surgery. Good volume of um, fat tissue. Similar patient before, two months later. Have a look. Our examples, uh, we're not scared of uh, volume of endoprosthesis. We're not scared of complications if there's good um, uh, subcutaneous uh, fat. We're not scared to lose these processes. That's a big process, 520 milliliters, 95, 605 milliliters, even 650 milliliters. Well, besides endoprosthetics, the main um, techniques of uh, flap reconstructions, um, we use flaps as well, toracodosal uh, flap, tram, uh, diap, gap, and other uh, flaps. Uh, toracodosal is uh, skin and muscle. Uh, flap, uh, we like this uh, flap, it's a rescue flap for us. Uh, on the slide, you see a clinical example of a patient who earlier had a subcutaneous polyurethane endoprosthesis, a very good uh, fat layer, enough uh, tissue were left, but unfortunately, it's difficult to forecast the reaction of a patient to the uh, neoadjuvant uh, treatment. So during the treatment, uh, there took place diastasis uh, without any infection uh, due to a small amount of uh, liquid around the endoprosthesis. So we have lost that uh, process, unfortunately. Uh, thus, we've made a delayed reconstruction with trochodosal uh, flap, this time with a textured endoprosthesis. Uh, next, uh, let me tell about the tram uh, flap uh, usage, the abdominal muscle. Uh, free la flaps are more good. Uh, there's uh, no need uh, to uh, form a tunnel and a long leg, muscle leg. Or gap flap may be used. Thanks for the attention.